about, uh, Mark did a, uh, Mark McBride taught a Bible study on Wednesday night a long time ago, and it really just hit home with me. And he read the scripture about James, count it all joy, count it all joy. And so I went back to James tonight, and I had some thoughts I wanted to share. So I'll read um, from James chapter 1. I'll start at verse 2, and we'll see how far I go. <laughs> My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Isn't that what Don just prayed about on Sunday? But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Isn't it funny that you want nothing when we're patient? Because we acknowledge what we have, right? There's something about being thankful right now, even though there may be something that we desire, to not let that overwhelm us in the moment and just be grateful. When you have a grateful heart, it's always more than enough. And I was thinking about that. And no matter what it is, and I feel like, I feel like right now we're in a time of manifestation. There's a season that's opening right now and it started in Ankeny, it's, revelation is coming, the word is opening up, things are manifesting, there's a hunger, there's a stirring, there's people gathering, there's people coming together. I've had personal manifestations and blessings. Of, I'm calling them miracles in my life, um, financial blessing. Um, you know, things are manifesting. And anyway, I just, I think this is part of it. I think it's part of it, right? It's, it's no coincidence that I talked about joy, he talked about patience, and it's, that makes us perfect, wanting nothing, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, let, that giveth to men liberally, and that braideth not, and it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of a sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not the man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Darlene and I were talking about this, and I think you mentioned it, Jody, that we can undo our belief with our own words, you know, and talk about what we see versus what we know is the truth. And I think that's part of when we're thankful, our words are full of thanksgiving. When we're strong and we're rejoicing and our hearts are overflowing with joy, our words are joy-filled. When we're, we're full of love, our words are love-filled. But when we're full of worry, our words worry. When we're full of doubt, our words show doubt. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 the, it's the rudder that steers the ship. It's the, the mouth shows the world what's in our hearts. And what is in our hearts? You know, moment by moment, we can be so easily distracted. And I think that's really all it is, mm -hmm. is right now, in this moment, being present and being thankful. You know, there's, there, the, things aren't ever going to be perfect. But right now, it's enough. And it's more than enough. Yeah. God is more than enough right now, no matter what is going on. Right. And if we, and, and Nathan talked about being thankful. I, I agree that that's the source of all blessings. Because when we're thankful, our perspective changes. Right. You know, what we look at, you know, and, and I read something um, about, you know, like keys to a happy life. And one of the things, you know, seven things you should never do that will, you know, whatever keys to a happy life. And one of the things is compare yourself to others. And I think as Americans, we're constantly being told what makes us happy, right? We're being marketed to. We're being sold to. Mm -hmm. You need your hair this color because now gray hair is in style. Like people are dyeing their hair gray and purple. Yeah. So, <laughs> woohoo! Yeah. So, you know, what's in style? Or short, curly, straight, flat iron, perm, like, you know, in the 70s. There's a whole bunch of pictures about the Aquanet 80s days. I think uh, anybody that remembers those Aquanet 80s days. We're being told what beautiful is. Right? We're being told what attractive is. We're being told what it means to be wealthy. You know, you, the big diamond. Oh my gosh, I love to give my husband a hard time about all the diamond commercials. It's my favorite thing to tease him about. <laughs> Honey, if you really love me, I'd have two diamonds in my ring, not just one. Because it's the me and you diamond now, right? Because it's not just one diamond, it's two. And, you know, like, <laughs> a diamond ring does not equate love. <laughs> but boy... You know, I tease my husband, he'd really love me a lot more if I <laughs> But we're constantly being told that what we have is not enough. You know, we have so much. Any of us who've ever traveled, and any of us who've ever worked in missions, or worked with homeless people, or worked with people who really have nothing, we have so much. And if we can just be thankful, you know, and I don't know, this season, the spirit of this season 
is about life and that more abundantly. And the most important thing we have to give at Christmas is the truth of Jesus Christ, yes. the truth of his grace, the truth of his word. And if we can be patient, right? I, I don't ever pray for patience. I remember a long time ago someone told me, don't pray for patience, you get trials. <laughs> well, you know what? We're in this world. Yeah. Guess what? They're coming whether we pray for patience yeah. or not. But if we can count it all joy, it starts right there. Count it joy. Because you know what, Lord? Everything in this life I receive is sin. I remember Darlene told me I was a baby, baby Christian. She said, Suzanne, receive everything as if God gave it to you. And you yes. thank him for everything. Because yes. it's not your job. It's not your paycheck. It's the Lord that opened yes. the door. It's the Lord that made a way where there was none. It's right. the Lord that supernaturally promoted me like crazy in my job. Like, right. that's the Lord. Right. That is the Lord. That is not me. That is just his blessing and his provision. And if we can be thankful and be joy-filled, that is our strength. And I'm telling you guys, since I started counting it all joy, things change. Yes. And I, it, you know, and, and I know that you share something that you know, great is thy faithfulness. That that's what that's what changed things for you. Yes. You know, and our health. I mean, that ear infection. Sally had an ear infection. Weird, like crazy stuff that's trying to distract us. That's trying to keep us down and keep yes. us out. You know, and yes. I think of one of my characters in the puppet show that you'll meet this Sunday. He was a wolf out in the field, and he was looking for the lamb for his dinner because he was hungry. He was looking for the lamb all by himself, but he saw angels, and he heard them talking to some shepherds about a savior. And so he followed these, you know, he's, he's a wolf, right? You know, so, but he follows the shepherds into town, and he sees Jesus, and his little wolf life has changed. That happens for all of us. Yeah. If we can just open our eyes and open our ears and see the good news right. and share the good news, right. things change, and not just for us, but for those around us. Right. So I don't know, I'm kind of babbling yeah. tonight, but count it all joy. Yes. Count it all joy, for great is thy faithfulness. Yes. God is good. Yes. God is good. We cannot forget how good he is. Yes. In Jesus' name. Anybody have any prayer requests or testimonies tonight? Yeah, James.
believing in the Lord for Cindy's healing. Um, she's home. My sister decided to come down to see me, so she's at the house right now visiting the Lord. She works up at Murphy up in Mason City. So I pray that uh, she would even see the hand of the Lord on, on Cindy right yes. now. It's a breathing situation. Uh, I'm renewing the mind of being excited how the Lord's going to heal her of that. But uh, she went in Monday to get her. Her oxygen levels were better, uh, but they said she needed to go to a heart doctor because her heart rate is real high. Um, she also has to go to a, a gastrologist because her uh, stomach, her indigestion, stuff like that's going on. So I'm praising God ahead of time for the healing for that. Um, things like, you know, the engine's out of my Jeep. i got to wait another six weeks or whatever to save up for getting that replaced. But I'm excited on how the Lord is going to re replace that. So... This time next year, I'll be in North Carolina with my kids for Christmas. I'll have a vehicle, I'll be able to drive, you know, all those kind of things. So uh, I'm just praising the Lord ahead of time to make all these things happen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I know a lot of these distractions are coming up because uh, I know the Lord wants to manifest his presence in our midst. Yes. And it's just these things that I'm running up against that are not of the Lord. There's a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. There's like a, an artificial veil mm -hmm. that's been laced, and it just the sword of the Lord just needs to cut through it. And uh, we're pressing on, and I'm starting yes. to see it around different places around this region that there's a hunger. Mm -hmm. um, but I know there's more hunger than what I'm getting response on. So just pray for the Lord. The Lord gave me a specific time, and it's not so much chronological. There'll be one or two specific things happen that I know that will be released to run with this realm. So just pray for uh, wisdom and knowledge and understanding and strength and an eye on what the Lord is doing. So. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. This, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. That's okay. This, this, is, this is involving, and I talked to Tim briefly about it Sunday and haven't really made a uh, uh, big deal about it because it's a, it's a gathering either here or depending on the size of the hunger. Um, the gathering would be called the passion, the passion for the fire, the presence of the Lord. Um, a gathering, three nights. I saw Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night, where we just come in, just for several hours, just going after God, just worshiping, just worshiping, just worshiping, almost like nights of fire, just going after God. And and uh, I don't know what it's going to take. I know there's going to be special people put in our midst, um, but it's it's time. It's yes. time. So I'm praying for. His specific time, and I'm not mm -hmm. going to push this thing. Um, one response I got was, uh, "We got to make this happen." No, yeah. we got to follow Him and yeah. let Him guide us through that thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let our hands push it and let His His hands guide us right. in this situation. So, yes. pray for wisdom on this. Amen. This region needs it. Yes. yes. Amen.
Chancellor and thus all those involved in the uh, youth Christmas program this weekend. We wrote it ourselves. <laughs> yeah, the children amaze me. Anybody else? All right, let's stand and go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just come before you tonight. We enter your house, Lord, your house of prayer. Lord, we come to lay our burdens at your feet, Lord, to lift up our loved ones who have needs, Lord. Healing in the body.
two people watching on the internet right now, and I don't know if they're part of this church body or not. And if you are part of this body, well, even if you aren't, there'll be a web post later of this service. And there was also a link on there. I need you to respond. Because I believe that where you're at right now, you're also sensing what's going on. Those that are thirsting, the Lord is ready to open up his well. Those that are hungry, the banqueting table has been, has been laid, has been set. Come, you who are thirsty. Come, you who are hungry. There's nine of us here this night, but this room is full of the Holy Lord. This room is full. change when those that he's calling start answering that call. And he gave that prophecy to Ezekiel when he said that he's going to seek the lost. He's going to bring back those that are astray. He's going to bind up the injured and he's going to strengthen the weak. further than we are right now is going to be removed as those that he's calling start coming out from the darkness.
wrestle not with flesh and with blood, but the powers and principalities. Remember? We wrestle not with love, but the violent forces in the heavenly. I'm gonna make it stand. I have it tired. I'm taking back my land. I have it tired. No star and no more. Gonna take on the sword and fight in the name of the Lord. Decided. I'm gonna make it stand. I have it tired. We wrestle, we wrestle not with flesh and with blood. With power of Sing it out, bro. We wrestle not with each other blood. But the body forces in the heavenly. I have decided. I'm gonna make a stand. I have decided. I'm taking back my land. I have decided. The spot ain't no more. Gonna pick up the sword and fight in the name of the Lord. I have. I have decided. I'm gonna make a stand. I have decided. I'm taking back my land. I have. The spar ain't no more Gonna take up the sword and fight in the name of the Lord We're saying Jesus, what a Lord Jesus, the mighty King Jesus, Lord of the universe Jesus, Lord and Lord Jesus, the mighty King
We wrestle not with flesh and with blood, but power and principalities. We wrestle not with each other's love, but demonic forces in the heaven. I have, I have decided. Hallelujah. That's exactly what it's about. I have decided. That's what it's about. You know, I, I love the fact that God gives us a will to choose. And we can either will to decide to complain or we can will to decide to rejoice. It's a big difference in the path your life goes. Your attitude does make a difference when it comes to the things of God. Those people who choose to rejoice, it doesn't mean they don't have any problems. doesn't mean they don't have any concerns. But they choose a certain way, and that way is to follow God. And that's really what it's about. He deserves to be worshipped. He is so worthy. And let us never, ever forget that. One thing in the... 2 Samuel 22, 4, I love when Scripture says, like, I will. Again, it goes back to that choice. And it says in the King James, I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I love that. I will. I will. I will make that choice. I will call on the Lord. Now we look at that worthy, and now it means having worth or excellence. Now think about that. God is excellent. God is beautiful. Think about all he's done for you. <clears throat> That's one thing I just see more and more, that how valuable God is, how deserving of our praise he is. Think about where he brought you from. I know I speak about that a lot, but I know what I used to be. I know the thoughts I used to think, but now to be able to think those godly thoughts, to be able to realize, you know, there's a lot of people, I, I, I know Suzanne talking about, you know, when God is more than enough, absolutely. God is more than what you need. He always bless you more than what you need. Because we can look back on a time when we didn't have enough. Well, I, I'm telling you, didn't know, didn't know you used to look in the refrigerator. Wasn't in there nothing but a light bulb. Let me tell you, bud. You know, moldy bread. I remember those times, buddy. You know, where we, I remember driving years ago, and we always got paid on Friday, so Thursday we had hardly nothing. Quick Trip, you sell two hot dogs for 99 cents in a package, and a cup of water was 10 cents. So we'd split the hot dog, and each get a cup of water. I remember those days, man. You know, and, and you think about them, praise God, you had something. You had something to eat. You know, and you're exactly right. In America, we bless with so much. Yeah. And some places you can't make a decision what you're going to eat. Oh, yeah. you know, because it's the same thing every night. Yeah. Close to nothing, let me tell you. I, I, you know, and we got so much to be blessed. Yes. I mean, a lot of people have two cars, three cars. Yeah. You don't have a three-car garage. Yeah. You know, the kids have their own bedroom. We have so much stuff in America. I mean, you have so much stuff, you got to build a storage unit to put the rest of it. You know? I mean, there's big business there. 
You know, we got so much to be thankful for. And, and, and as we're thankful, I think that's what moves the heart of God. When people choose to be thankful, they might not understand what's going on. I'm telling you, sometimes things can get pretty frustrating. They can get pretty dark. But, you know, God is still there. You know, that, that's one thing I think sometimes we, we tend to forget. We think that when we're having hard times, God leaves us. You know, we, we all, we heard the, you know, the footstep, the footprints in the sand been for, out for years, you know, and, and, and the person, it's, it's, it's an anonymous now, but the person always thought, you know, you see these two foot, two sets of footprints, and all of a sudden there's just one, you know, and, and I mean, that would be a logical thing to think, God, you left me in those times. What happened? I didn't see one. I didn't leave you. I was carrying you. You know, I always think that is so powerful. That's why that has touched so many people, because they understand that. They understand when, man, it seems like everything's going wrong. But, you know, think about the days that you have, all the good days you have. They don't wait. You know, we think about the bad days. They don't even outweigh each other, because you have more good days. You have more days where everything goes right, rather than things go wrong. You, you really do need to count your blessings a person does. That's what turns hearts around. You know, I tell you what, when people see the difference in you, that's what draws them to the Lord. Well, how can you act this way in the midst of all this? Why? Because I'm looking up. That's what I look toward the hills. It's not the hills. It's where God, we need to look up. That's the big difference. I, I remember working with a guy, and he, he was one of our guards at the loss prevention at, at, at Walmart years ago, and he ended up having to get a heart transplant. And I remember when he came back, he moved to the store. And, 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 and he, he went up to the Mayo Clinic and got his new heart and stuff. So I, I saw him. I come in the store, and I saw him, and I asked him how he was doing. You know, and, and I heard that he had this done. And I never forget the way he looked. I, I said, how you doing, you know? And this is what he done. I, it, was, it, was, it was like such a humble thing. You know, he didn't say, I'm doing fine and everything. He did this. He bowed down like this, and he pointed up. That's all he did. Yeah. I thought that was so powerful. He knew who kept him alive. Yeah. Who gave him a new heart? There's a lot of people across the country need a new heart, but God saw fit that he got a new heart, and he just pointed. I'll never forget him looking down and looking up, pointing that finger up. That's who did it for me. Yeah. That's who did it. And that's where we really got to be in our lives. Yeah. We got to be in our lives. Every day we get up, every morning, God wakes us up. First thing you got to do is praise the Lord. Because, you know, everybody didn't wake up that morning. I mean, we, we, we plan for the future. You know, you buy insurance, you do this. How do you know today isn't your last day? How do you know you're not going to be in glory tomorrow? That, that, should, that should guide how we're going to live every day. If we really believe in Psalms 139, let's turn there. If, uh, let's look at Psalms 139. We, and we know this scripture. We often quote it that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Don't, don't you love that? I just think that's just one of the, 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 the best scriptures there is. I just really, I, I just love that because when we look at Psalms 139, uh, 14, it says, I will confess and praise you, for you are fearful and wonderful for the awful and wonder of my birth. Wonderful are your works and that my inner self knows right well. Now I'm going to read it also out of a, out of a different translation because sometimes you know, I, I love looking up scriptures in different translations because sometimes they just bring out a, a, a little bit more out of it, you know. And, and I like to read that because um, uh, this is out of God's Word's translation, verse 14, Psalm 139. I will give thanks to you because I have been so amazingly and miraculously made. Oh, isn't that powerful? Yes. You know, God thinks you're amazing. See, see, people have, they have a little difficulty when they, when they think God really loves them. You know, you tell them God loves them sometimes. He loves me. He loves me, you know, with all my faults. Yes. Yeah. He loves you. And think about how you were made. Yeah. Think about that. I, I love the way that brings out. You're amazing. You know, God, think about it, you know, and, and, and say when it's so, where, where, where before you was formed, you know, God's weaving your personality he, he knows what you're going to be like. You know, he knows your temperament. He's putting all these things inside of you because he, God doesn't make, we hear this a lot of times, it's cliche, 
But in a sense, I mean, it's no, it's true. God doesn't make junk because he's got a plan for everybody's life. Yes. You know, and, and that's why we should never, ever, and I know I say it a lot, but I deal with individuals like this that haven't had somebody believe in them. Right. You know, we ought to be there to encourage people. If somebody's going through something, we ought to be there for them. Don't ever knock somebody's dream down. You know, kids, it's interesting with kids because, as you know, you ask a kid what they want to be, and they have all these dreams and stuff, you know, things they want. They want to be an artist or a fireman or, you know, whatever they want to be, and they believe they can do that when they're four or five. But, man, you get, you know, get a little older, you know, especially you get through your teen years and you get through there, you know, you get these people. Some people are negative all the time. Well, you can't do that. You can't do that. Well, you know, well, you know, the thing about it, when, when you say I can't, you're limiting what God made. How do you know what God has for my life? How do you know? We don't need to do that. We need to encourage them in the way we can and be there for, you know what? That sounds like a fantastic dream of yours. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pray for you. Yeah. See, there's a whole lot of people that pray for you that we don't even know. They could have been on the other side of the world, and God said, pray for that young lady over there. I don't know who she is. Pray for because I got a plan. Everybody that was born, there's a better plan. You know, God guides us to righteousness. We make some decisions that ain't righteous, let me tell you. But even when we make the wrong decision, God can still use that for good. You know, he, the, the thing about it, I love the most about God is he doesn't give, us, give up on us when we mess up. You know, and, and then think about it. Some people, once you do them wrong once, they're done with you. I mean, they're absolutely done with you. They're going to throw you away. Boy, I'm glad God doesn't do that. You know, you ever look at the people that God uses in the Bible? How many of them didn't mess up? How many of them didn't make a mistake and didn't do something and God didn't sin and done something wrong? How many? It's not that God used these perfect people. He shakes them. We used to go, I was talking about, uh, we used to go to a place called F.W. Fritters and Son, south of Detroit. They make clay pots. And, and I love going there because usually the owner, he's an older guy, and, and we didn't have to ever uh, count anything. They always loaded it, and we just backed in the dock. But one day I was out there watching them, and I love this because what they did when they, they had a conveyor belt and the pots came down, and they put them in the box, and they had an inspector, and he looked inside that box, and he put the cr clay pots and he said if they had just one crack, they'd never make it on the truck from Detroit all the way back home. They would not. So you know what they would do? They'd take these clay pots. If it was one little crack, they would throw it in a big bin, okay, and it was no good. It couldn't be shipped out. Then some other ones would come down. So I watched it. So they took this big bin, and then they take it outside, and they dump it in this other bin, and then a conveyor belt pulling. You know what it would do? It'd go back to the factory again. <laughs> It was just, they wouldn't waste anything. They'd go back, heat it back up, and make another clay pot. And then they'd just keep doing it until it was good enough to ship out. And I thought, how is that? It was never wasted. I thought, how was that? Just because we got a cracker, we're not, we're not perfect. You know what, God? We're still working on it. We're still working on it. We're not done with you yet. Don't feel your life is over. You know, Moses had to go through that. You remember the first 40 years? You know, and then he got ran ahead and run out of Egypt, you know, because killed the man. Now he's going to the backside of the desert. I'm sure he's thinking, well, man, I remember mom was talking about that God had a plan for my life, and I thought I had a plan for my life, but it sure wasn't the right plan, you know. I killed the Egyptian and all this stuff, and they're after me. And he's on the backside of the desert. I'm sure he thought, you know, the first year was bad. Well, maybe God, he's still going to use me, you know. And then it's the first decade. Well, I'm sure, I mean, I mean, being real, Moses probably wonder, man, it's been 10 years, God ain't using, I'm here watching these old sheep out here, yeah. you know, what's going on here, ain't no TV, no nothing out here, man, <laughs> you know, ain't no cable out here, nothing, I'm stuck out here in the backside of the desert, ain't nothing to do out here, all this sad, you know, I'm sure Moses, you go through all those thoughts, that now, now in second decade, 20 years, oh man, all I'm doing is growing a beard, that's all I that's all about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm just out here. Ain't nothing going on. Now, then it turns to 30 years. You think he started wondering? Yeah. 30 years? Man, I had all that luxury there in Egypt. I could eat what I want. I was living in Pharaoh's castle. I had all this stuff, and all I got is sand. Uh. Yeah. But 
you know, 30 years, what happened? The 40th year. Moses is 80 years old. And he thought, man, oh, I'm, I'm an old man. You know, <laughs> can God use me? But one day, what happened? He saw this burning bush, right? But it wasn't being consumed. Something's happening. And he looked over there and said, man, what, what's going on here? I'm going to turn aside. I love that. He, he turned aside and looked over here. Said, something's different about this day. Is God trying to speak to me? And a voice, hey, you know what, most This is holy ground. Yes. You know why it's holy ground? Because God's there. Yes. So it, it don't matter how many people come to church. When God's there, you can still have church. Yes. It don't make no difference. Hallelujah. Right. I remember going to church. I, I, I was telling my angel, that's what I call it. But I remember going to church, and I'm telling you, it was just two people there, me and the deacon. That's the quickest church service I ever seen. Started at 8 o'clock. We was out of there at 8.20. But I tell you what, God was still there. Yes. It didn't make no difference whether the deacon showed up or not. The doors open. We still had church. Yes. You know, you can have church. My sister, I was talking to her this afternoon, and she said, can you pray over the phone with me? Can you pray? Sure I can. God's still there. Yes. You know, the, the phone line ain't got nothing to do with it. We still had church. Whether it's two or three touched that green, I'd be in the midst, and God is right there. And we were saying hallelujah, going down Highway 28. Yes. Let me tell you. You know, because you can do that. That's what I love about prayer. You can make that connection no matter where you are. You know, it, and it's, it's amazing even if you, if you didn't meet people got different language. The Holy Spirit's still going to be the same. It can connect people, you know, and, and bring them together. You know, I, sometimes I think about heaven. I think about all the different people. Can you imagine just if, if you've been in a, in, a, in a congregation that had a community choir of big people and all them voices singing hallelujah? Man, there's something powerful there. Yeah. There's something in there. You know when God's there. Yeah. You know you can walk in a room and you can tell when God's there. Yeah. You can tell when he's gone before you. Yeah. You've had those situations in your life and you pray. I know we, we had a situation one time with, with, with one of our nieces and, and we was praying. And, we, and, and you know one thing I said, pray, let's pray that God will move. And tell you what, and God moved. And I said, I tell you what, never forget this day. Yeah. That's what I think we do wrong sometimes. When we get in another hard place, we forget that God delivered us over here in A. Why wouldn't he deliver us over in B? Yes. Why wouldn't he do that? Sometimes we forget. And God says, why do you forget about me? That's why the children of Israel had such a hard time. They, they kind of missed that. All the stuff that God done for them in Egypt, and then they come out of Egypt, and they walk across the, the, the Dead Sea, you know, and they, they, were at the Red sea, they walk across the dry land, you know. They walk across the Red Sea, and it's dry, and then they get on the other side, and they're praising the Lord, and then they run out of water. Then, they, then the first thing you do is start complaining. But did you forget what just happened? Yeah. And I think sometimes that's what happens in our life. When things suddenly get hard, you know, when, when the checks don't come the way they should, and something goes, first thing we do, where are you, God? Where are you, God? It's like, God says, where do you think I am? I mean, <laughs> where do you think I am? I'm the same place I was. Do you think that this, this suddenly just came out of nowhere? You think it surprised me? Sometimes I think, sometimes we think that way, that this is surprising God. Did he know this was going to happen? Folks, he made you. Right? And he knew Moses was on the back side of the desert. He knew where he was at. You know, he didn't have to thumb do his Rolodex and all that stuff and look it up on Facebook to see if Moses was, <laughs> what Moses was doing. He, didn't have, he knew where he was at, right? Yes. And he said, you know, no, no, you're going to go back to Egypt and you're going to deliver God's people. Me? Now, I, I can understand Moses had a lot. And, and it's amazing. Moses started giving excuses. Well, I can't speak well. I can't do this. You know, it's almost like God got tired. Man, why would I choose you if I didn't think you could do it? I know you can do it. I, I know how you speak. I just want you to go. And I think that's where God wants us to be. Well, I don't have the talent. I can't do this. I can't do... Well, we got to get can't out of a vocabulary. Because we have a God who can. And that's where we got to realize. God is bigger than all that. I know Tammy Faye Baker used to sing that song... God is bigger than anything. <laughs> you know, God. God is bigger. That's what we got to build God up, that he's bigger than all the circumstances in your life. 
That's where we got to be at all the time. Whatever, what happens? You know, if the money gets slow or car breaks down or, or whatever the circumstances, we got to always look that God can deliver us. And that's exactly what happened with Moses. He spent more time with God. Can, can you just, just be able to commune with God? And you remember as the children of Israel went, that he went up the mountain to commune, and Moses' face shone so much, he had to put a veil on. And that's what happens to people who spend time with God. You ever notice somebody spend time with God? They might not have hardly anything of the worldly goods. We think about it. But you know what they have? They have peace inside. You know? They, they, I mean, they will pray with you. You know, they have such a gentle spirit about them. They're not people that rush around. They got a peace about them. Why? Because they don't forget right. one thing. They don't forget what God done for them. Right. You know, you ought to just sit down one day and just make a list of all the blessings God has given you. And keep that list. Keep it close to your heart. So that next time when things get kind of rushed and everything, and you think God won't come through, remember that. One, one thing, all the years when I, when I drove for, for Walmart, uh, I have this prayer book. And what I would do, I'd write prayer requests, and, and I use it as a journal too, and I'd write things in there. But every time God answered a prayer, you know, I'd make a note in here. And every day I, I'd keep track of that. And I would, I would do it with journals and stuff and just start keeping track of it. So if I got a time where you got a little discouraged, I'd start looking through that and I realized, yeah, I saw when God delivered me here. I saw when God blessed me here. And I'm always thinking he's going to do it again. God's going to do it again. I know Mike and he would be talking about prayer and time. Like I tell you what, there there's comes a time you have to decide. Do you want God more than anything? And that's where a person's got to be. I mean, sometimes we, we, we want this. Oh, if I, if, I can get a, if I can get a Cadillac, if I can get this, or I can get that and make me happy. Well, I'll tell you what, it's that, 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 you know, that might make you temporarily happy, but you're going to have a payment every month. That might make you sad, let me tell you. you know, let me tell you. Well, I wish if I had this house or if I had this person. If I had this, I had this. What we need to do is seek God. That's why I said in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek God first. Put him first. You can never go wrong by putting God first. I've seen him move so many circumstances that you know it's God. I, I remember getting a job when I, when I started working at DMAC. You know, my, my daughter's the one that told me about it, and I went over there. And I just moved up here in February 2007. I'll never forget. So I went over there, had everything in there, and I went in there, and, and, and I got my paperwork, filled it out. And I tell you, by March... 2007, less than a month, I was working there. there you go. Now, who was that? Uh -huh. Who was that? Absolutely God. Yes. To, to be a total stranger and come in there and get that job, and next year it'd be nine years. And, and I think, but that's only God. God opened that door. I didn't know anything about it. My daughter just saw the trucks go by, and it was an opportunity. And they hired right away. Because God, I tell you what, God can put on your heart where to go. He can put on your heart where to live at. And I think the key, what I love about my angel the most, is that she does listen to what God has to say. Absolutely. And then I listen to her. See, I learned to be a wise man. And a wise man listens to the woman in his life. Right? Because God used My cell phone quit working the other day. And, and it wasn't the speaker. wasn't there something was wrong with it. I couldn't hear her. She couldn't hear me. So he said, well, let's go stop down. To, yep, we stopped last night. And that lady did something on the computer and started working, didn't it? How much did it cost us? Didn't cost a dime. And my phone, well, that was God. It's better than go out and buy another two or three hundred dollar phone when I didn't need one. I just, just and she did something and got it all working. That's God. Let's just stop in here or let's go to this place. I tell you what, when God sends godly people and God's talking to them, listen to what they have to say. Even Moses, I love Moses because you remember when he was trying, he, 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 was, he was listening to all the people that had all these issues coming, and he'd do it from basically all day long, you know, listen to all the problems. I mean, that'd probably wear him out. Yeah. Let me tell you, that would work every day. Well, this person, you know, this person's using too much room in the, in the house, or, you know, this person stole my cat, or, you know, can you, you know, all these different things. 
can you think about that? All these people coming, and, 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 and Moses' father-in-law says, man, what are you doing? You're going to wear yourself out. One man can't be doing all this. Moses thought he had to do it. You need to get these, some other guys who have that same fear in them. You need to get them to help you. Yeah. And you know, Moses listened to them. And then you end up having what we call deacons and elders kind of came down from there. But he got people. And when God sends those godly people or somebody come alongside, hey, brother, hey, can I, can I just talk to you a few minutes? Listen to what you have to say. Because to tell you what, usually well, I've seen a situation where God's already started dealing with you before they even come along. You know, well, I believe one, one guy said, hey, Tim, I believe uh, God's calling you to preach. You know, and I'm thinking, well, that's what he's been putting on my heart for a long time. So, so it just came to confirm what he was already starting to deal with you. And that's the way God does. And if God, well, I, I believe you ought to be part of the worship team. Or I believe you ought to go over here. You know the difference. You, you're exactly right when he sang that song about, you know, you, you got enemies out there that do not want you to rejoice in God. You want something to make Satan mad is when people rejoice in God. He don't like that. And he, he, don't, like, he don't like when you get up and praise God. Because to everything, that's why he likes to pull God's people down. Or he likes to get them thoughts circling ahead. No, this ain't going to happen. That, that's going to happen. I said, no, you know what? We're going to start confessing this. Yeah. Right? That makes a difference. That's why the word of God is so powerful. Because you confess it. Right here, this is the sword. And people who are willing to declare what yeah. God has done. That's what we're declaring God's word. Yeah. How can you ever go wrong? Oh, Reverend Ike used to say, you can't, can't lose with the stuff I use. And that's, what, and that's really what it is. You can't, you can't lose with this. How are you going to lose with this? When, when Jesus, think about it. When, when I was coming home the other night, and I got to thinking, <clears throat> why were we created in God's image? You ever think about that? In God's image. And I got to thinking, you know, he could have made us look like anybody. But he made us in his image. He's like, well, he gave us two arms. Most people are going to have two arms. Then we can reach out and hug somebody. Come on. Right? Come on. And, and, and he gave us two ears so we can hear the word of God. Uh, is that right? Uh, he gave us one mouth. Uh, you know, <laughs> which is, we might thank God. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it is. You know, because sometimes we talk a lot. But he gave us two ears so we listen a lot more than we talk. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? And he gave, he gave two eyes so we can see the things of God. And I gotta, I gotta share this with you. One, one time, and, and, and again, if I share anything again, I'm sorry, but it's just on my heart, you know. But I, I just never forget. I was thinking about this the other day. My cousin flew a kite, and and they would get this is years ago, but they get the kite that had the had the little cardboard on it, like it's straight, and and then it would unwind. The cheap, the the poor kids had the ball, but they the rich kids had the <laughs> had the one that come off that spin off. So what did he do? He tied on and let it out some more. And then he tied another one on and let the kite get up there. And I'm telling you, he was in my backyard. So I run out and tell him what he doing. So I'm flying a kite. So I'm looking up. I'm looking. I don't even see the kite at all. And I just see a string going up to heaven. That's all I saw of this string. I'm thinking, well, he can't be holding the string up. Let me take There's something going on here in the backyard. But I just saw the string. I didn't see a kite. I said, I said, look at say, well, Tony, I got an issue there. I got an issue. How do you know a kite's on there? I mean, obviously, a kite has to be on there. How do you know a kite's on there? He said, Tim, come over here and hold on to the string and pull the string. You'll feel that tug, and you know the kite's up there. And I never forgot that. I said, oh, man, you know, God, God uses stuff like that. And I said, oh, I got it. How do you know God's up there? Just tug on there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just tug on there, and I know God's up there. I know he's up. I can feel it in my heart. I know God's real. You know, people say, well, how do you know God's real? Because I, I say, I'm a walking testimony, and I'm a miracle. I'm amazingly made by God. That's how I know. When I was on the sick bed, he raised me up. When, when the doctor, I remember the doctor, when I had my blood clot, he thought, if I hadn't come in that day, I was dying. Well, I'm still here. Yeah. That was five years ago, and I'm still here. Yeah. And I'm, I'm telling you what, that's the testimony. We ought to thank God every day, praise God every single day. Because God doesn't give up on you. It doesn't make no difference if you're 60 or 80 or 90. God can still use you. Yes. 
I tell you, let's, let's not forget that. Oh, hallelujah. I just want to share one more thing here. Then we think about the one thing, Jeremiah 31, 3. I love that scripture. All right. And this is from New Living Translation because I, I, I love how sometimes they say a little bit different. Jeremiah 31, 3, New Living Translation. Long ago, the Lord said to Israel, I have loved you, my people. I love that. My people with an everlasting love, with unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. Think about that. Everlasting, eternal, endless, lasting forever. Think about that. Hallelujah. That's worth it. Is that worth it? Right there, that is worth it. To think God's unfailing love, that everlasting love, you know, I'm telling you what, sometimes people may give up on you. This relationship may end, but God and your relationship is not going to end. He says, my people, my people, yes. the ones that belong to me. God loves us so much. Yes. We can't never lose that, folks. Right. Never get away from that. You know, people may turn away. I've seen, you know, somebody may love you today and somebody might not love you. I always say this, somebody's always going to love you. Somebody's going to always hate you. That, that's just the way life is. But not with God. Not with God. He's always going to love you. You know, they, they said in the same psalm, you know, if I make my bed in hell, God's still there. He's still going to love you. And I always say, if they make the bed in hell, they're planning on coming back. You know, they're coming back, right? And, and the thing is, you know, even when we're down, we don't have nothing, God's still reaching down and pulling us up. You know, let me tell you, you might, you might have been over here where you didn't have this, you didn't have that, and it looked like nobody cared, but I'm telling you what, God cares. Yes. He always cares for you. Yes. And let's never forget that tonight as we close here and realize how valuable you are to God. Never forget that. You're the apple of his eye. He loves you so much, and he wants you to take the love that you have and share it. There's so many people that don't feel that. There's so many people that don't understand God's love. You know, sometimes we kind of put the scripture, you know, uh, God is love and throw it out. Sometimes they don't understand and say God is love. Sometimes they need to be shown. And they see that difference. You know, giving them a hug or, or, or saying, brother, can I sit down and pray with you? I haven't had really in my whole life, there's not too many people that I know that ever reject praying for. Them. I haven't, hardly have anybody. Once in a while you get somebody that don't want to be bothered. But most of them, you know what they say? Thank you. That's what they say. Thank you. You prayed for me. I tell you what, that's powerful. Because you're taking time. Just think about that to reach the king of glory. You're taking time for them. Because I'm telling you, there's sometimes you can't even pray any words. You're so down and you're just crying. And you've and you probably been, you know, you can get a place where you cried so much that you use all the tears up for now. But you're still crying inside. But it's nice to know somebody's praying for you. It's nice to know that God still understands that. And he's like he's putting his arm and says, you know what? I'm still with you when you're crying. I'm going to wipe those tears away. We're going to get up, you know. And, and, and that's what we really got to understand. That, you know, no matter how hard it is, we still got to get up. We got to get up and show up and realize, okay, we got to put one foot in front of the other and we got to keep going. That's what God expects us to do. You know, he don't expect us just to lie down and, and, and this is all. No, I tell you what, I still got a lot of life for you. And Moses was like to say he was in that position where he thought, man, God, I'm done. God's not. He said, no, you ain't done. I ain't got, I got plans for your life. It doesn't make any difference how old you are, how young you are. God can still use you. Let's, let's close tonight. Hallelujah. Let's close. Hallelujah. God, we love you. God, there's one thing we want to never forget, and that's where we came from. Realize you brought us from a mighty long way off. And Father God, we thank you for your everlasting love, your unfailing love, that you're constantly calling us, that you want us. You want us to go into the world. You want us to go out there and tell them that, hey, hey, God loves you. You know what? And we're going to show you how much God loves you. We're going to reach out to you. And realize, you know what? Your life can change. Why? Because my life changed. 
and it took God. I was where you was at years ago, but God made a difference. And I'm here to tell you, he can make a difference in your life if you just let him. It's got to come down to this, God, I will. What is your will? And like Jesus said, I always do those things that please the Father. I always do those things. Let that be the cry of our heart. That we'll always do those things that please the Father. Yes, Lord. And that's what it's about. Yes. And Lord, I ask you to watch over everyone tonight as they go to their homes. Protect them. Yes. And Lord, as they go through the work day or school, whatever they may go, let them see how big you are every day. Let them see miracles in their life. Let them see healings in their life. Let them realize that, Lord, every day you're going to put your arms around them. And, and like I said in Zephaniah, you're going to rejoice over us with singing. That's how much you love us. Let us never, ever forget how much you care for us, how much you love us. Let us not forget that. And, Lord, let us always rejoice in you. And we want to thank you for tonight's service. We want to thank you for your love and your kindness, your graciousness, your strength, for everything you do for us. Hallelujah. We want to thank you in your wonderful holy name. Hallelujah. Amen Hallelujah. and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.